This is Norman Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries, and um, I wanted to talk uh, to you today a little bit about, um, as I've been reading through my book on George Mueller, and I also was reading a book uh, that talked about some of the uh, prominent Christians in the last couple hundred years um, in, uh, in the faith, both in the United States, England, and India, and other parts of the world. And each chapter is based on a different personality, like Fanny Crosby, who wrote over 8,000 hymns, and, and uh, Robert Murray McShane in, uh, in Scotland, and different um, uh, people that uh, maybe you've heard about, maybe you haven't. Uh, but it's a wonderful book uh, because it is a very encouraging book on looking at the life of these uh, heroes of the faith, like George Mueller. And uh, one of the things that uh, I thought about is I'm getting near the end of the George Mueller book and reading the biographies of some of these other uh, saints is that they, they developed a skill that I'm attempting to develop in my life, but I find it to be somewhat times hard to do. And that skill is the ability to be able to hear and see God moving in life circumstances. If he closes one door, does that mean he wants us to keep praying until he opens it again? Uh, if um, circumstances are heading in a direction opposite of what we think God wants to have happen, does that mean that he's not in those circumstances? Uh, and their ability to be able to look at circumstances that are happening around him, be able to tell when it is the kingdom of darkness that is hindering something and it's still God's will, and they just need to pray through or whether or not God is not even in that situation and wants them to head in a different direction. Their ability to be able to see that God is dynamic in the sense that he may want something at one moment, but because circumstances have changed, he wants something different at a different moment. Uh, they just had the ability to be able to see and hear God in the circumstances of their life. And that skill is one of the most important skills, I think, for a mature Christian. But I confess it's a very hard skill sometimes to develop. I think um, uh, that is, is difficult for us to develop that skill, to be able to tell when God is working, what he wants, what his will is in some situation. Now, obviously, you know, this is blind spider monkey true that if, uh, if something is clearly against God's word, then we know it's not right. And I'm not so sure that the church... Even the church does not need to get back to the fundamentals of the faith, and we would know God's will in some situations. But whether or not you're supposed to move across country, go be a missionary in, in, in uh, another uh, country, um, uh, take a different job, quit a job, uh, uh, buy a house, not buy a house, whatever, whatever. Those things are not clearly um, mentioned in God's word or especially those things that deal with ministry. If God wants me to be involved in a ministry, not be involved in a ministry, those are the things that are very important. And I find that as I get older, that becomes more important to me as a Christian, that I find out what God wants me to do because I don't want to miss it. I don't have a lot of time left. Uh, I am um, almost moving into six decades of life, and uh, I don't have a lot of time left to be uh, missing God's will. So it's more important to me to hear that. Now, I think as I read through their life, I know this is kind of another thing that's just obvious, but as I read through their life, the main thing that happened was that on a daily basis, they sought his will in every single thing that happened. I think one of the things that you find about most of the ministers and um, most of the church workers and pastors uh, of the past that were good at this was that they they sought God's will in everything and I mean everything they literally uh, I, I understand that Martin Luther said and I might kind of misquote this a little bit but Martin Luther said something along the lines of uh, I have to pray two or three hours a day because I'm too busy not to which is opposite of what somebody would think that praying two or three hours a day uh, but his point was was that he needed to get a hold of God in everything that was going on in his life, so he brought everything before the Lord. And along that same lines is they were close to God. They were close in fellowship to the Holy Ghost, uh, to the Lord Holy Ghost, and to um, the Son and to the Father in their prayer life. And therefore, because they were close to God and they, they were close to him, 
they could sense his move in circumstances that on the outside it would be impossible to be able to figure out necessarily if that was God's will or not God's will. And so it comes back to that simple fundamental of the faith of being a faith of being close to the Lord in everything that we do and seeking him in everything uh, that we do and spending time finding out his will. Uh, and, and sometimes George Mueller, I know that we can find this in the witness of Daniel in the Bible and some uh, other witnesses that finding God's will may mean to bring a matter before him for months or in some cases years before you have a clear answer. But they waited until they knew in their heart of hearts that something that whatever they're about ready to do was something that God wanted them to do. I think if we waited before the Lord and we uh, until, and by the way, way that, that term kind of biblically has that idea behind it is keep going back to God until on his throne room he makes a decision and we know what his decision was after we ask him. I think waiting upon the Lord is something that, um, and, and fellowship with him uh, are fundamentals of the Christian faith that uh, the church needs to get back to. And this goes back to one more thing I'll say that uh, in, the, in the church today, especially among the probably the youngest generation, and maybe the last two generations a little bit, there is this move away from the past, this idea that the Old Testament is not important, that uh, that the uh, people, you know, Christians uh, from a generation ago don't really have much to say to us, that if you're older, you don't have any wisdom. And that is just terrible, terrible hogwash uh, that uh, the church needs to move away from. We need... Uh, uh, the giants of the past. We need to know them. We need to follow their faith. We need to we need to have them mentors in their books and their biographies, uh, because they uh, have the answer uh, to a strong Christian life, and uh, we would learn much from them if we were willing to go back and find out what they, you know, had to say. And I don't mean that we had to follow all of their, you know, life principles. Um, in necessarily dress or where we would go or what we would do or how we would live um, because you know Puritan uh, America or uh, you know Puritan England obviously isn't today um, but it doesn't matter we still should listen to the principles of their life as they are following God's Word and um, at least using that cloud of witnesses to help us go forward in these end times that the spiritual battles and spiritual warfare are so powerful and so strong. This is Norman Kissinger from Redeeming the Time Brothers Ministries. May God bless you this week and uh, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace.